Scott, your turn. What's going on on Oahu? Give us some news. Give us some updates. What do you want to comment on? Uh, yeah, to piggyback off of Dylan's comments about the previous market in 2006, I'll never forget this conversation I had with um we actually ended up being good friends, and I ended up having to bail him out and help, help him on the sales side. But he told me, he said, I did it. He goes, yeah, I just bought this condo, no money down, negative AM loan, negative amortizing loan, meaning what it means is you have your principal and interest payment, and you can make the interest payment and not the principal portion, and the principal goes back into the loan, so the loan keeps getting bigger. These are typically types of loans that you would see with developers, short-term uh, debt that you you know, get in, you want the low carrying costs and then get out. And he said, yeah, man, I'm going to hold it for a couple of years and I'm going to sell it for a big profit. I said, man, your, your risk load on that is pretty hefty. And he, sure enough, the market turned on him and he ended up having to walk away from these units. We, we didn't see any of that in this market. There's not a single person I worked with over the last two years that didn't have a significant down payment appraisal clause removal or cash. Um, pe- people had money in this market. And there was a lot of capital uh, to go around and interest rates were really low. But we should expect deceleration. That's what I call it. I, I, I don't like the term slowdown because whenever I, if I say slowdown, people go, oh, market crash. That's not where we're headed. You know, as interest rates go up, that's a cost factor that is increased. You know, if you buy tomorrow and the interest rate goes up more than it is today, that home's going to cost you more in a monthly payment. So you can't have appreciation and interest rates both going up and it not affect that price appreciation component. So we are going to have deceleration. I'm starting to see it a little bit. In fact, for the active number of active homes on the market right now, we're at 508. We were at 425 last time I did the show. So yay, we're starting to get a little more inventory. But in perspective, in a normal market, we're at 1,600 to 2,000 homes. So by no means are we anywhere near where buyers are going to be like, yeah, I got a competitive advantage. No, sellers have all the advantage still, and they're going to. And, and I, I don't, my gut tells me six months of inventory is a balanced market. We're at like 1.4 right now. I don't think we're going to get to six, which means, yes, we decelerate. People aren't going to pay 150 to 300,000 over asking, which is some of what I was putting together during this time. But you are not going to be in the driver's seat for negotiations, at least not for the time being. And the one component that would, uh, you know, significantly affect any price appreciation, I, I do expect double-digit price appreciation this year, over 10% price appreciation. Um, I don't. The, the only thing that affects that is if interest rates go nuts for some reason that it has to eat into the, what has to give. The price portion has to give, right? But we are an inflationary period. That means the cost of everything is going up. Why would you think your house is going to be cheaper tomorrow than it is today? It's not. That payment, if you're getting a mortgage, is going to be more expensive tomorrow. I don't care how, how you slice it or dice it. And so you have to have that kind of mindset and understanding. People, people focus on price a lot but you buy on a monthly mortgage payment. So let's look at the whole perspective and where are we going? And we're gonna be more, you know, if you're an investor, uh, your cash flows are gonna get affected here because two two things, and you touched on it with the rents, uh, price appreciation up 20%, right? But rents only up 13. That's because rents follow after price, which also means if you're an investor and you're buying, your cash flow position is gonna look bad when you're analyzing it, but guess what, the rents next month or the following month after that will be more, and what is that performance gonna do over the long run? Those are where you gotta make your projections. So the market is shifting. 508 single family homes on the market. I'm, you know, I'd love to see us get over 1,000 at minimum for, for a little while here to just to give more normalcy. I don't, it's not a healthy market to be in that little bit of inventory and, and buyers having to do that. So, but I will say, and I said it last month, condos are where it's at we lost more inventory on the condo side. We're at like 850, right? So we have less condos on the market now because where are people shifting to? The more affordable price point. Interesting. So basically what I'm hearing from, from you guys is right now, it's like, uh, I, I forgot the, the good word that you used, Scott. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't call it markets. What De- did you call deceleration. it? Deceleration. A deceleration. I was going to call it a slowdown, but deceleration sounds better than slowing down, but that, they, both, they both mean the same uh, regardless. Um, 
slowing down, but no, no, no kind of a, a, a crash kind of a, a signal where we're going to have a, a severe drop. And that's an interesting observation too. the interest rate. I mean, the we're in an inflationary period. So, you know, that inflation is, is you, you kind of, it's kind of hard to kind of bump that against lowering uh, prices going down. So that's, 